Thank you so much for joining me. If you haven't been here before, my name is Tracy and this is a DIY upcycling channel where we take thrifted unwanted items, boring clothes out of the closet, breathe new life into them and create clothes, purses, and accessories, wearable art, funky fun stuff sometimes. So today I want to make a pretty, I hope it's beautiful, <laughs> white springy summer dress. I want it to feel a little boho. I want it to be romantic with layers, a little bit of ruffling and lace. Now this is going to be two pieces and they can be worn individually or my plan is work together and just be a beautiful layered sort of log and look piece. Okay, so I am making the dress out of this top. This is a size large, it's cotton, and it's kind of a knit. I prefer it be more of a crisp cotton because sometimes when you start adding things, it gets kind of weighed down and a knit kind of gets weighed down a little more than a crisp cotton, but I'm going with it. And I have this dress. They're both thrifted, they're both from Goodwill. Now, this is fairly cute on its own, right? But it's very unflattering on me, but I was looking at it, disappointed that it was unflattering on me, but it button unbuttons from the top all the way down to the bottom. And I am, this will be the top layer and it'll be sort of a vest duster that will layer over top of like an ankle length dress. I'm really excited to jazz these up, so let's get going. Okay, I'm just digging in. <laughs> the first thing I want to do is work on the sleeves of the dress. This is the, sh the top. And I want to put a ruffle. There's a little piece of lace at the bottom here. And above that, I want to add a ruffle. So what I'm going to do is go to a bed sheet and I made a snip with my scissors one inch over and I'm just going to rip a strip. Okay, so now on each sleeve, I want the ruffle about half an inch from the lace here, but I'll be sewing down the center of the strip. I like to start on the underside seam, so let's just pretend that's where I'm starting. And I will take it to my machine, no pinning anything. I'll put my needle in and I'll just pinch pleat it all the way around. So, pinch pleat, sew until I get all the way back to where I started. And I will use a straight stitch right down the center. So this is what the sleeves look like so far. When I was finished, I ended up trimming these a little bit so they weren't so bulky looking. Now I want to add a little bit of a flared ruffle at the bottom of the arm. And I'm going to use this sort of doily table scarf. And I am just going to cut the lace off of this little linen piece. I just ordered some lots of lace off eBay because it is spring and time to do white lacy projects. Okay, I cut that piece in half that I cut off. And now to both of these, I'm going to my machine and I'm going to put them right sides together and sew them together with a zigzag stitch, my largest zigzag stitch, so that it makes a full circle like that. Now I want to attach those two pieces to the sleeves. Now my lace circle is about six inches larger than the circumference of the sleeve. And I just want to pin it on. I have the shirt inside out, and I have the ruffle inside out. And see this little band right here above this lace? 
that's what I'm going to be sewing it to. So I'm going to take that seam that we just made and I'm going to pin it to the seam on that line underneath so that that's kind of hidden. Now I'm going to kind of pull this lace ruffle just a little bit snug so I can find the opposite end and I'm going to pin that to which would be the top of the sleeve. Now I'm going to find the center of the ruffle between the pins, the center of the sleeve and pin that and then my ruffles will just keep getting smaller and smaller. I'll keep finding the center, pinning it until I have it satisfactory where I feel I can go sew it. Now I have both sleeves pinned. I am going to go sew it. I'll stay at the top of this piece of lace, but I'll be sewing it to the band using my zigzag stitch. Okay, there the sleeves are. Now this has, this top already has some pretty lace detail and some pleating. So I'm not going to do a ton there. I want this dress to be fairly simple with beautiful details. And so on the back, I have a rectangle sort of table scarf doily, 10 inches across, 16 inches tall. And I am just pinning that sort of in the center, just to break up, because that is just like a plain knit fabric, unattractive. And this will just add some texture. Very simple. I'm going to finish pinning that on, and then I will sew it with a zigzag stitch. Just assume when I'm sewing lace that I'm using a zigzag stitch. I'll stay close to the edge all the way around. what the back's looking like. Okay, now I'm going to go to this thrifted skirt. It's way too big for me, but when I see things like this at the thrift store, now it has pretty detail, it's cotton, and it has a gauzy lining, which is so nice and light for dresses like this. I am going to use the outside of this skirt for the bottom of the dress, and then I'm going to use that gauzy lining as little ruffles. So I need to get this cut apart. And I'm basically just cutting off the waistband, and I'm staying very close to the waistband because I want as much of this skirt fabric as I can salvage here. I decided before I'm going to sew the ruffles, I want to add a few small doilies, two in the front. I have one right here and I have one right here and I have one in the back just sort of off center and overlapping that rectangle. Now I'm going to go get those sewn on quick. Now I have those sewn on and I am going to do two or three ruffles around the top before I get the bottom sewn on. It's just going to be way easier not to fight all that extra fabric. And I want to make at least one of those out of this skirt lining. And I am going to cut this bottom hem off of the lining because my ruffles will be raw and kind of tattered and frayed. But if I leave this on, some of them will and some of them won't. And I just want to keep them consistent. Now I am just going to cut a couple strips along the bottom, two inches wide. And I'm going to snip this and see if it tears. 
Easy peasy. Now I have my strips cut and you can really start sewing anywhere with these. I am going about an inch and a half above the lace here is where I want the bottom of this ruffle. So I will just take it to my machine and this does not have to be exact. It could even go up this direction if you want it to. I'm kind of keeping it fairly symmetrical, but I will take it to my machine, no pinning, and I will stick my needle in and I will line this top edge up with the side of my presser foot, which brings it down about a quarter of an inch and about every inch and a half or inch, I'll overlap it on itself about quarter of an inch. So, and then just keep trucking along doing that until I'm all the way back to where I started and I'll overlap that about an inch. And I'm just using a straight stitch on this. Now this ruffle is done. And now I want to do a little lacy ruffle next. Okay, and I have a lacy sheer curtain. It has a pocket rod at the top, but the border is scalloped and very pretty. And I am going to cut an inch and a half off around the border of this curtain. I decided to go an inch and three quarters. Not a big difference. Okay, here's my little lace. Now this time, I want it about there, which is four inches up from this ruffle where the stitch line will be, and not the top of the lace, the actual stitch line. And I will do the ruffle just like I did this one. The only difference here is when I get towards the middle of my shirt like this, it's easier to sort of get lost and not know where you are. So. I am just going around with my tailor's chalk and I'm going to make some dashes at four inches all the way around the shirt as my guideline. Okay, there's that ruffle. Starting to get cute. Now I want to start lengthening the dress. So I'm going to go to that skirt fabric and I'm going to cut 15 inches up from the bottom and cut a strip. Here's what the bottom of the skirt looks like and it is 20 inches larger in total than the bottom of my shirt. Now I am going to pin and sew this just like I did the sleeves because this has a lacy detail with a band just like the sleeve did, only this time I'm going to use a straight stitch. My top and ruffle are both inside out and I'm pinning it to this band right above the lace. Okay, this was the bottom of the skirt that I just sewed on. The shirt already had lace right here, and I stitched it underneath to the top part of that lace. Whoops, sorry. Right to that band. So that's what it looks like underneath. And it looks seamless on top. Okay, starting to look like a dress. Now, I want to add 10 more inches to this because I wanted to hit at about my ankle. Why didn't I sew, I am going to sew ruffles onto this, just like I did here. Why didn't I do it before I sewed this on? Because I need to kind of stand back and see where I think, kind of the composition of it to see where I think it needs it. So it's worth kind of fighting this big dress to get the ruffles just right. Now. I have this lace tablecloth. I tell you, whenever I see a lace tablecloth, 
cotton big ruffly skirt, anything like that, I pick it up. So I kind of have a collection. Now I am going to cut the border off of this entire um, tablecloth and I'm going to cut it 10 inches tall. It, I don't know exactly how much I'll need. I'm pretty sure this will be plenty. If it's not, I can add more. And if it's too long, I just snip it off. Now I have, I have two strips here and I want one long one and I have more I can cut off if I need to, but I'm going to see how far this takes me. So I just need to sew these two ends together. I'll just use a quarter inch seam allowance and a zigzag stitch. Oh, I have it backwards. And get that sewn together so I have one long piece. Now I'm going to sew this one on a little bit differently. I have my dress inside out and my ruffle sort of inside out. I'm looking at the wrong side of it right here. And I will start at a side seam and begin sewing this. But I won't start at the very end. I'm going to start about an inch, inch and a half in. That way when I get all the way back around, I have something to finish it off with to sew this to. And I'll sh show you that when I get there. But for now, I'm just going to lay this over top of the bottom hem here, just overlapping probably half an inch. And since this is lace, I'll use a zigzag stitch and I will start inch, inch and a half in. And I will generously pleat this, maybe go every inch and a half overlap a good half inch. And I'll probably need to cut more off my lace because there's a lot of volume here. So I'll just go get that sewn and I'll show you what I do when I reach where I started. Okay. I've gone all the way around the bottom of my dress. And this is where I started, leaving that little flap. But I have all this lace left. So I have to cut some of this off and sew it to this so we have one continuous piece. So here I just sort of eyeball this and decide where I want to cut it. Now I want to leave enough room to make a little, another little pleat or two. And I think right there, I will cut that off. Okay, so now I want to sew this to this, right sides together. So I need to take this out of my machine so I'll back stitch, pull it out. Now I have to kind of turn this upside down in order to do right sides together. Okay. Now I'll just run a zigzag stitch all the way down the side here. So now I've gotten that sewn together and I still have a gap right here that I need to sew shut. So I'll slide it back into my machine, clip a couple threads, find the spot where I stopped, go forward back, and finish shut, sewing that shut. Okay, so it's the length I want now. Very voluminous at the bottom and flowy. And now I just want to add some more ruffles. I'm going to start at the bottom, that lace piece, break it up a little bit with some strips of bed sheet. Okay, I ripped two inch 
wide pieces of bed sheet and a quite a few of them and I think I want them to hit about here now there are some pretty flowers in the design right here I'm going the bottom of my ruffle just above that I would say two and a half inches up from the bottom and I will sew a quarter inch down and all these ruffles will be the same as the ones we did on the top part of the dress. Just sew that all the way around. Okay, here's the bottom of my dress. Here's the ruffle I just did. And there is some decorative detail here. So my next ruffle will be above that. I don't want to hide that. And I think I'll go maybe an inch above that with the bottom of a two inch bed sheet ruffle and go all the way around. Okay, there's the ruffle I just sewed and I am loving how this is looking, just beautiful. Now, I'm tired, I'm gonna call it a day, I think, and I'll come back tomorrow, which will just be like one minute for you. But while I'm um, upstairs watching TV or whatever, this will be the second part to this dress, this sort of sleeveless, I'm going to call it a sleeveless duster. It has all these brown buttons. So tonight, I think, and there are a ton. <laughs> so tonight, I think I'm going to sit down with my tub of buttons and replace all of those with vintage mother of pearl buttons. I have a lot of little ones in there because I don't use those as often. So I think I have enough for this, but I contemplated leaving the brown because I have these kind of fun Mary Jane type shoes. And I bought some lacy stockings um, from Amazon. So this would match the buttons, but I am just feeling it, it's not going, this outfit won't be its best if I have the brown buttons. So I'm going to replace those and I'll see you tomorrow, which for you will be one minute. <laughs> now the buttons are all done and I'm really glad I did that. Okay, so what I want to do now is I have kind of a blank space right here. I want to do something to it, but I feel if I put another ruffle there, it's going to start looking stripey, like stripes. So I'm going to do something a little different. I have a basket of small lace scraps that I save when I'm doing projects. And I think I'm just going to sew some of these around that area and maybe do a little bit up through here. Okay, here's the bottom section of the dress. And I am just kind of snipping some, some are just fine. Just random pieces that are almost going to look sort of tattered. And I'm doing white and off white. I'll probably alternate the colors but it really doesn't matter. So I laid some out. I will put them, oh, maybe an inch and a half below this ruffle, and I will just take the pile to my machine. I won't pin anything. And what I'll do is I'll lay them out as I go, and I will use a zigzag stitch, and I'll sew the top. And then I'll lay my next one, overlap it a little bit, sew across the top, and just keep doing that all the way around. And then when I get them all on like that, I'll come back and I will sew the bottoms. Because I want these kind of flat, not roughly. Maybe they would be cute roughly. Wait a second. Let me think about this. Okay, yeah, I think I will just sew the top. And then this will be a little, not a ruffle, but will have dimension. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> okay. That's what those lace pieces look like. Okay.
Okay, I think I'm done with the dress. I was trying to add other little things and wasn't really liking anything. I love it just the way it is. Now I'm going to start on the second piece to go with it. And this dress is a blank canvas and I sketched ideas of what to do with it, you know? And this is where over analysis paralysis, paralysis can get you into trouble. You know, you have so many ideas, you don't know what you want to do, so you never get started. Pick an idea and go, and that's what I'm going to do. Okay, first thing I'm going to do to mine is cut eight inches off the bottom because I want to add some lacy ruffles all around it. Okay, now I have some big doilies or table scarves. Um, I want to cut them into eight inch ruffles approximately. So eight inches is about here. I'm actually going to cut it open this way. And now I have a ruffle that looks like this. And I'm going to do some more. And I usually stretch these out. So I just cut this one out. You can stretch it out to make it longer, more of a sewing space. Okay, I'm going to sew these around the bottom, but also up the side, starting at the bottom, up, around, and back down the other side. Now, I don't have to do a lot of pleating with these because these were circular, and when you open them up, it already has sort of that pretty natural pleating. So I will start at the bottom when I start, but I'll show you up here what I do. And it's just super simple. I just try to line it up as close to the edge of the neckline in front as I can and zigzag stitch all the way around. And when I do the back of the neck, I may do a little bit of pleating there. That tends to lay strange if you don't do a little pleating, but for the most part, I won't. Oh, let me mention. So this flap here and these buttons, here I will just, now let me back it up again. I will just go next to those buttons as close as I can get, and I'm just going to leave this alone. Now, if you don't have large doilies like this, I know they can be hard to come by. You can use like a curtain, cut the border off a lace curtain or the border off a lace tablecloth. You could even do this with a bed sheet and just make a pretty, you know, white ruffle. You'll just have to do more manual pleating that way. These kind of have a natural pleat. Okay, I went up all the way around, and now I'm down to the bottom. The only difference here is I have to turn my lace piece around. This is the top, and I'm just going to sew, sew it at the bottom. I won't, on these, need to do a lot of pleating, but if I feel like my lace piece isn't pleaty enough, I may do a little bit of pleating. So now I am just going to do the same thing along the bottom of the duster. I'm overlapping about half an inch. Okay, that's what that looks like. Now, I have some smaller doilies and I am going to pin these on and sew them in sort of random places. And this might surprise you. I am not a huge fan of taking a doily and slapping it on a garment when it's high contrast. You know, something dark, you, pin, you sew a doily on there and it screams, hey, I just sewed a doily on my shirt. <laughs> but when it's white on white, monochromatic like this, I think it's fine because then it just sort of becomes 
a textural detail more than, hey, look at the doily. So I will get some of these pinned on. Not sure where I want them yet, but then I'll show you where I put them. Okay, so I put a doily there, one right here, one down here. Can you see that? And one right here. Now I'm going to go get those sewn on. Okay, so now I have four long strips of fabric. Two are the bed sheet and two are lace from that curtain. Each one is about an inch and a half wide and they're all about 72 inches long. Now, right here, there's a wee span. I stuck a pin to mark the center of this dress in the back. And I am going to go to my machine and I am just going to put all these strips together at the top, center it on that pin, and just do a few zigzag stitches back and forth and sew that on right there. Okay, a lot going on here, right? <laughs> Here are the strips of fabric I just tied or just sewed on. I sewed them right there. And then I went to a doily that looked like this. It had these pretty flower shapes and I cut three out. Now I'm just laying them over top of where I just stitched that on. And I think I want the center one a little higher than these. And I'm just going to overlap a little, maybe I want that one on top. And then I'm going to pin these on. But before I do that, once I added these, I thought, well, it'd be nice to have this similar color streaming down. So I took the border of that doily and cut two long pieces and I am just going to pin this underneath right now. And then when I go to my machine, I can just sew that on with these flowers. Now I'm just going to pin these on. And when I'm done pinning them, I will sew them. I'll start probably over here, use a zigzag stitch and follow this sort of thick part around just sort of all at once there. And then once I get that done, I'll come back and sew the bottom part on. Okay, that's what that's looking like. Now I have six strips here of fabric. I'm just going to tie them into a big generous bow. And I say generous bow because if it's a little bow, it looks too cutesy, like it screams bow. But if you do a big generous one, it almost looks like fringe with a little dimension. Okay, I'm gonna have to work on that a second. Okay, so now my strips are still touching the floor a little bit. I'm just going to trim them up so that they don't. Okay, I'm all done sewing. Here's what the duster looks like with the dress. Now I am going to go wash this. I'm going to wash it in warm water on a normal setting with a little bleach and then I'm going to tumble dry it on low. I'm pausing to be more clear here. Those cleaning instructions I just gave you are because I want maximum fraying to happen with my dress. Now, what you would want to do for cleaning instructions, or if you were selling and doing a listing, you would say dry clean or machine wash in cold water on a gentle cycle, line dry. And then I will have some crazy fraying happening that I'm going to have to trim this up, spend a little time, and then I will put it on and show you what it looks like. 
Okay. If you want to feel like a million bucks, this is the outfit. You feel so feminine and romantic and oh my gosh, all this cotton, everything's so soft and cozy. So I'm going to slow it down for you in a second and let you get a better look at the details. But first I want to answer a couple questions that I get often. And one is, will those doilies, that crochet, completely unravel when you wash it in the washer? I've never had that happen and I've made lots of these. They will fray, but I've never had any come unravel. The second question is, where do you wear something like that? Well, for me, it's obvious. I'm going to be barefoot on a porch swing, sipping lemonade and reading a good book. All right, thank you so much for watching.